This is the only job in the world that would ever give me the opportunity to eat food from a celebrity chef. Mm. Today's shoot is at this behemoth of a house. I've got a shoot today with Victor Danos. He also does vlogs, so you may have seen him, but he's in the DFW Filmmaker Group. He sent out a message a while back saying that he was looking for somebody, I think we're gaffing and stuff. I hit him up, just said I was interested, and they picked somebody else. But the person that they had originally picked ended up dropping out for whatever reason, I don't know. And he went with me as second pick. So kind of goes to show, like put it out there, put your name in the hat, because you have no idea what's gonna happen. So this is a two day shoot, which I love multi day shoots. That's just more time blocked in the calendar and more money being made. And it's kind of funny that I keep getting hired for gaffing positions. I'm not a gaffer. Uh, I do enjoy gaffing. I think it's a valuable skill to learn as a filmmaker. I think it makes you an exponentially better filmmaker when you can understand how you want your scene to look and how to achieve that look. But at this point, if it's gonna keep making me money, I'll keep taking the gaffing jobs. I'll keep building up my gaffing kit and I'll just do filmmaking when the opportunities arise. It is a weird scenario to kind of back yourself into a corner that you didn't really plan on. But if I'm gonna get hired for these lower production and gaffing jobs, I'm gonna keep taking them. Just spin this? Yeah, you can just spin that instead of that look. So one of my favorite things about being on set is problem solving. I love to be an asset on set. That's why a lot of the times when you hire me, I bring all of my equipment. I would rather a shoot go smoothly because I provided an extra C-stand or a sandbag as opposed to the shoot going poorly because something was missing that I could have possibly prevented. Victor reached out ahead of time and asked me if I had a way to do an overhead cam. And I had done this before for the YouTube channel when I wanted to film overhead. And it's just taking one of these C-stands and then screwing the camera onto it. The only problem I ran into is it's just a straight bar so i would have to pivot the entire arm to get the thing to go up and down so i went on amazon and bought these three quarter and half inch uh pivot heads they're interchangeable um, they are made of plastic, which isn't my favorite thing, but for $10 a piece, they were perfect for the scenario. And again, I was hired to be the gaffer, but being able to solve this problem or create the solution here is something that I think is valuable. And it's just one of those little things that they will think about whenever they are looking to hire somebody again. They're always going to look back on the person that made set life easier for them. And that is my job. That is my goal is to be an asset on set. So I think it's fair to say that everybody learned a lot from the shoot. When you're shooting outside, you're not only fighting the elements of the sun, but you're fighting the elements of sound. What made this shoot so difficult was how much mowing was going on, how many planes flying over, birds making noises, all these different aspects of outside filmmaking that I don't think got taken into complete consideration. So we actually ended up probably wasting around two to three hours in just sitting by waiting for things to clear up so that we could film and record uh, the chef speaking to camera. So this is a three cam setup. You have the overhead cam, you have the main cam, which is kind of the wide, and then you have the B cam, which is the tight. Victor asked me if I wanted to be on the B cam. Of course, I said yes, I'd rather do that than just sit around all day after the lights are set up. The other thing I learned about myself during the shoot is how much I'm actually learning about how light works. I'm getting better at figuring out where to bounce light, where to block light, how to diffuse light and different things. And it wasn't really a product of me not having the knowledge uh, that was keeping us from achieving the results we wanted. It was more the lack of equipment that I had. And again, we made do with what we had. Thankfully, the porch was mostly shaded. So I am definitely proud of myself and the team for what we are able to pull off for the shoot. No, you oh. guys. <laughs> no, that's different. That's completely It's like two grand, isn't it? Like that monitor? Yeah. This one? Yeah. No, it's actually like a thousand. Really? Yeah. The 702 Touch. I yeah. like it. It's like so crispy. Yeah. So if you want to see video footage, go check out Victor Danos's uh, vlog that he's going to have coming on this. But thankfully, he did provide me some screenshots and stuff. This is his video shoot, so I'm not going to ask him for video footage. This is one of my favorite stills from the entire shoot. I think it came out really smooth and clean. It doesn't feel too harsh. And this is pretty much how we set it up. So the 48 by 48 floppy that I bought for this job came in handy just as I thought. We were able to use this to cut the reflection on the grill behind him because it was basically 
super overexposed where the sun was hitting him. Then we brought in the 600X as basically our hair light. So we shined that in from behind him, gave him a nice rim. It made it look like it was the sun coming through. And then we used the five in one diffuser that they had brought to soften the other sun that was coming in, just providing shade for him. And I think it created a very clean image, one that I would happily put in a portfolio personally. So it just goes to show you don't need a ton of equipment. I know the 600X is like a $2,000 light, so I'm not saying it's cheap, but you could always rent something like that. And then the five in one, I think is, you know, sub $60. And the floppy that I got was a TRP worldwide floppy. It was $200. Again, you could rent that. It was something that is achievable on a pretty decent budget if you're willing to rent. So all in all, I'm very happy with the results of the shoot. I think the stuff came out clean. I think it came out nice, uh, again, given what we had. The MVP of this shoot was definitely the five in one. We were able to use it obviously for bounce, for diffusion and stuff like that. And that's what we used for all of our food shots. We just found a nice spot and I held up the diffuser to give us a nice soft diffusion over the food. And that was some of our favorite shots of the whole thing. So thank you, Victor, for having me out. And if you need a gaffer in the Dallas area, shoot me an email. There she is. My brand new office. So I packed my tape measure away, but nothing gaff tape can't fix. Basically just found like the point where I thought I wanted it right here. It was close enough to give me an idea of what I'm doing. I put that one up first at the height I wanted it. I took a piece of gaff, just stretched it real tight across to get close enough, figure out where they needed to be. The studs are the same width across and everything. It's perfect. <laughs>